Leave us or forsake us. We are consistently reminded as individuals, as children of God, the Lord is right there with us, walking through each trial, walking through each trouble, giving us his resurrection power. We read of that in Ephesians 1. And if we have the Lord's resurrection power, then we have everything we need to do what's right, to say what's right, to think what's right on a daily basis. Multiple times we sang scars and struggles on the way. Happy, happy joy times, right? <laughs> scars and struggles. Uh, being a parent is not easy. Uh, loving and living for the Lord, not easy. There's going to be scars and struggles on the way. But what did we sing over and over again? God, you are faithful. Uh, we serve a faithful God. Uh, we so often are unfaithful to him. He is consistently faithful to us. Uh, we're going to give you a chance to stretch your legs. Uh, we're going to be singing Refiner's Fire and Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. So if you'd stand with us, please join our young people in singing.
warm it up a little bit. I played this one for a Sunday morning uh, special music uh, a little while ago. Um, it, t- it just talks about uh, accepting you're a sinner, accepting that you need God, and coming out of the darkness, coming as you are. So this song is called Coming As, Come as You Are. out of sadness from wherever you've been come broken hearted the rescue begins come find your mercy oh sinner come kneel earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal As you are, there's hope for the hopeless and all those who strain. Come sit at the table, come taste the grace. There's rest for the weary, rest that endures. Earth has no sorrow, the heaven can't cure. So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame, all who are broken, lift up your face, oh wanderer, come home, you're not too far. So lay There's joy for the morning, sinner be still. Earth has no sorrow, the heaven can heal. Earth has no sorrow, the heaven can heal. Thank you, Luke. We appreciate that. Thank you, young people. We love and appreciate you, and uh, you've done a good job in uh, leading us uh, to this point in time in our service where we, um, where we uh, direct our attention specifically to the idea of dedication. Even Pastor Landon has succinctly preached a powerful message to us uh, tonight uh, and uh, one that I desire to emphasize with you Um, in just a moment, but let's uh, have a word of prayer together. God, what a wonderful evening you've blessed us with. We love our young people so much. We appreciate them. We love uh, watching them being used of God. We certainly love watching them grow. We love their leadership, Uh, not only Pastor Landon and Aubrey, but all of those who so diligently work with our young people and and actually afford them a, a good example of Uh, what a Christian ought to be. And that's uh, certainly part of the challenge for us tonight as we think about dedication. Of course, in the end, we'll be uh, participating in a child dedication, but it really begins with us, each one of us, examining our own hearts and asking uh, the all-important questions in regard to that. So, Lord, as we pause to think a little bit, 
even about the word dedication, I pray, Lord, that you would uh, bless us and help us. <clears throat> I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Everything unfolding here tonight really is governed by a single word. It's the word dedication. Uh, our young people may not understand this phraseology, and I would understand that they would not. But there's a, clear sense, there's a clear sense in which it is the woof and warp of Christian living. And what is meant by that is that it uh, lies at the very heart of the Christian life. Uh, it, it is the foundational and fundamental thing. I would propose to you tonight that everything flows out of a, a dedicated heart. <clears throat> And as we're about to see, it's the only legitimate response to God having saved us. I need to say that to you again. Dedication is the only legitimate response to God having saved us. And I'll just rehearse that with you very quickly. I, I, I suspect that most everyone here tonight is, is saved, but please know that our, our sin very effectively separates us from the one and only Savior and please know that there's only one Savior, only one who can rescue us and deliver us, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that whosoever believes on him, whosoever receives him in faith and trust, is wonderfully and miraculously saved. And it's with a view to our salvation that God would anticipate that you and I would dedicate our lives. Now, I want to give a, a very quick, broad word uh, to everyone that is here tonight, and then I, I have a, a quick, specific word to our dedicating parents. Theologians, this is neat. I wonder if you've heard of this before. Theologians speak of crisis dedication. And what's interesting about that term, crisis dedication, by the way, I like it, and uh, that's the reason why I'm pursuing it with you briefly tonight. What the theologians mean by that is not that, you not that you have dedicated yourself to the Lord while going through a crisis, but rather that there has been a particular point in time. I, I don't know if uh, envisioning it like a crossroads is, is the best way or not, but you might be able to do it that way. Where there's been a point in time in our lives when we have given ourselves wholly and fully to the Lord Jesus Christ. And again, it's because he has saved us. We, in our salvation, we have all the motivation we need in order to have a crisis dedication in our lives. And that is where we've arrived at the point. I, I would assume and hope that it's shortly after your salvation where we have arrived at a point where once and for all we have presented ourselves to God. Pastor Landon mentioned this, and I reiterate that we ought not to be talking about dedicating our children. We ought not to be talking about dedicating someone else or something else apart from ourselves having been dedicated. And so very quickly tonight that becomes the question for us, each one of us. Are you dedicated? Am I dedicated? And of course, the classic text is Romans 12.1, and many of you have memorized it. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That's the verse that gives the biblical warrant for theologians talking about a crisis dedication. Because the tense of the verb, and we're not going to lay a lot of semantics and, and, and uh, grammar on you tonight, but the tense of the verb indicates, listen, a once-for-all presentation. And I'm wondering if we've done that. I'm wondering in, if, if in your life there has been a point in time where you've had a crisis dedication, where you have said before God, because he has saved you, you have said, God, I am yours. You have made a determination in the past that settles everything for you. 
there's been a point in time when you have made it explicitly clear to God that it's settled in regard to who you are going to serve, where it's settled in regard to um, who, whose will you're going to pursue, where it's settled in regard to whose way you are going to walk in, where it's settled in regard to whose word you're going to obey. Again, we often talk about a smelling sacrifice to God, and you can imagine what that's like when he meets up with you and your determination, a once-for-all determination based upon the tense of the verb in Romans 12.1 where, be- where, where Paul's beseeching us to present once and for all ourselves as a living sacrifice. You can understand how, um, how pleasing that would be uh, to the Lord. And again, I, I trust that that's the case. Why would we do that? Because he has saved us. We often um, say, make sure that, there, I, I think Pastor Tom used this terminology this morning, we often say, make sure that there's been a point in time in your life when you recognize your sin before the righteous and holy God and turned from your sin and prayed to receive God's one and only solution to the insurmountable problem of that sin. But tonight demands that we ask the question or make the statement, make sure that there's been a point in time in your Christian, in your Christian life when you have made a basic, total, lifelong commitment to the will of God and to the God of that will. A once-for-all presentation, a once-for-all dedication of yourself to God. Parents, I repeat then that for you, most of the value of this evening, and I know that the evening is more valuable than we know, but I would say that most of the value of this evening is, is to be found in your having dedicated yourself to God. And I would say this with a view to your children, that nothing will hold more sway in their lives than your dedication. Can I repeat that? That nothing will hold more sway in your child's life than your dedication. And I can bring in this concept of crisis dedication, even with a view to your dedicating your children, that you would settle this once and for all. That's neat. That's why you're dedicating your children tonight, and we won't be repeating it next Sunday evening, because you're settling something. Isn't this exciting? They're settling something. And, and what they're settling, their, their, uh, their, their mindset and their heart set is, is in response to the question, what, what do I want for my child? And their response is, I want God's will for them. And this is the strong determination. This is the strong and the, and the strength of your presentation tonight. And as you dedicate your children, I am certain of this, not only does it please God's heart, but it also clearly moves God's hand. Just before we call you to come, Pastor Landon and I would like to share an appropriate song with you. To Jesus I surrender all to him I freely give I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live I surrender all surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. 
All to Jesus I surrender, Lord. I give myself to Thee. Fill me with Thy love and power. Let Thy blessing fall on me. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. I surrender. Our families go ahead and stand and come near to the opening over here. Our first family uh, that wants to dedicate uh, their kids to the Lord, Mike and Yenna Hyde, uh, with Austin. Next is Cole and Lauren Cardis with Willow. She's a Willow girl. <laughs> Cody and Jeannie Nas with Alice, Amelia, and Jareth. Clow and Andrea Nazarie with Oliver and Wyatt. <laughs> Wyatt with Oliver <laughs> and Clow and Andrea. And then last but not least, Rick and Joanne Sanborn with Celeste. I want you all to know, and I, I want you guys to know uh, that I exercise great self-restraint tonight because I really wanted to just grab each of you as you filed in, but I saw the terror on the part of your children in regard to that, and so I wanted you to, I wanted you to stick with us. Again, I commend you tonight, and uh, and will reiterate that uh, what is transpiring is very, very significant, and um, it, it's a joy to participate in this with you. Uh, it's my privilege to offer a prayer of dedication. Heavenly Father, here are these precious young families. We uh, love and appreciate them so much, and we especially thank you, Lord, for this point in time in their lives, especially with a view to your short message to us tonight, where they are once and for all presenting their children to you. 
answering the question, what is it that they desire for their child above any and all their other things with this? We want nothing but God's will for our children. You know, God, I know that you're honored by that, and as we noted, even together, we know that that uh, not only pleases your heart, but it also moves your hand. And so you'll be very active in response to what's unfolding tonight. I pray, Lord, that you would um, have your hand upon each one of these children. I pray, and some have already come to the point of salvation, but I pray first for that, that for each one it would quickly uh, come to the place where they're recognizing their need of Christ and praying to receive him as their own personal Savior. And then, God, that they would choose to live their lives for this one who loved the, them and gave himself for them. And again, that we all would be an example uh, to them of that. So I pray for Austin and Willow and Alice and Amelia and Jareth and Oliver and Wyatt and Celeste. Oh, God, uh, and, and fold them in your arms and care for them, work mightily in their heart and life, and use them for your honor and glory. We pray for Jesus' sake. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.